Question 1. What is the temperature range of the danger zone where bacteria grow rapidly? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit, minus 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. D. 70 degree Fahrenheit to 125 degree Fahrenheit, 21 degree Celsius to 52 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. The danger zone refers to the temperature range in which bacteria can grow rapidly, leading to an increased risk of foodborne illness. Question 2. How should food handlers wash their hands properly to ensure food safety? A. Wet hands, apply soap, and rinse immediately. B. Apply soap, scrub for at least 20 seconds, then rinse and dry. C. Use hand sanitizer instead of soap and water for quicker cleaning. D. Rinse with water only, avoiding soap to prevent skin irritation. Answer. B. Apply soap, scrub for at least 20 seconds, then rinse and dry. Proper hand washing technique is critical in preventing the spread of foodborne illness. Question 3. What are the symptoms of foodborne illness that food handlers should be aware of? A. Dizziness and fatigue. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Increased appetite and thirst. D. Joint pain and stiffness. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. These are common symptoms of foodborne illness that can result from consuming contaminated food. Question 4. Describe the steps for correctly receiving and storing food deliveries. A. Inspect deliveries, check temperatures, and store items immediately. B. Leave food items in the delivery area for sorting later. C. Store all items at room temperature for simplicity. D. Refrigerate only dairy and meat products, store others as convenient. Answer. A. Inspect deliveries, check temperatures, and store items immediately. Proper inspection and storage of food deliveries are vital to maintaining food safety. Question 5. How can cross-contamination be prevented in a commercial kitchen? A. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats and ready-to-eat foods. B. Wash utensils with water only between uses. C. Store all food items together to save space. D. Use the same gloves for handling raw and cooked foods. Answer. A. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats and ready-to-eat foods. This prevents the transfer of harmful bacteria from raw meats to foods that won't be cooked further. Question 6. What is the minimum internal cooking temperature for poultry? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D. 175 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Celsius. Answer C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. The minimum internal cooking temperature for poultry is 165 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that harmful bacteria are destroyed. Question 7. Define the term time temperature abuse and provide an example. A. Cooking food for too long at the wrong temperature. E. Cheap. Slow cooking chicken at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 38 degrees Celsius. B. Allowing food to remain too long at temperatures where pathogens can grow. E. G. Leaving dairy out for four hours. C. Freezing food before it is cooled properly. E. G. Freezing hot soup. D. Heating food to a temperature that destroys nutrients. E. G. Boiling vegetables until mushy. Answer. B. Allowing food to remain too long at temperatures where pathogens can grow. E. G. 
leaving dairy out for four hours. Time temperature abuse occurs when food is not held or stored at safe temperatures, allowing bacteria to multiply. Question 8. What are the signs of pest infestation in a food service establishment? A. Frequent customer complaints. B. Presence of droppings, nests, or damage to food and packaging. C. Sporadic power outages. D. High employee turnover. Answer. B. Presence of droppings, nests, or damage to food and packaging. These signs indicate a pest infestation, which can pose serious health risks and contaminate food. Question 9. How should ready-to-eat foods be stored in relation to raw meats in a refrigerator? A. Below raw meats to use gravity for cooling. B. Alongside raw meats if space is limited. C. Above raw meats to prevent drippage and contamination. D. In the same container as raw meats to save space. Answer. C. Above raw meats to prevent drippage and contamination. Ready-to-eat foods should always be stored above raw meats to avoid cross-contamination. Question 10. What are the four key steps to food safety, as recommended by the FDA? A. Buy, store, cook, eat. B. Clean, separate, cook, chill. C. Prep, cook, eat, repeat. D. Wash, dry, fold, store. Answer. B. Clean, separate, cook, chill. These four steps are essential to preventing foodborne illness by handling food safely from preparation to storage. Question 11. How often should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A. Once at the end of the day. B. Before and after use with different foods. C. Only when visibly dirty. D. Weekly during general cleaning. Answer. B. Before and after use with different foods. Cleaning and sanitizing food contact surfaces before and after each use helps prevent cross-contamination. Question 12. What is the proper procedure for cooling hot food safely? A. Leave at room temperature until cool, then refrigerate. B. Place directly in the refrigerator to cool slowly. C. Use an ice water bath or divide into smaller portions for rapid cooling. D. Freeze immediately to lock in freshness. Answer. C. Use an ice water bath or divide into smaller portions for rapid cooling. Rapid cooling techniques prevent time temperature abuse by quickly passing through the danger zone. Question 13. Explain the importance of a food safety management system. A. It ensures that all staff know how to use kitchen equipment. B. It primarily focuses on reducing food costs. C. It provides a structured approach to controlling risks and ensuring food safety. D. It is only necessary for large, complex food service operations. Answer. C. It provides a structured approach to controlling risks and ensuring food safety. A food safety management system helps identify and manage potential hazards in food production and handling. Question 14. What personal hygiene practices should food handlers follow to prevent foodborne illness? A. Wearing clean clothes only. B. Regular hand washing, maintaining clean uniforms, and avoiding work when sick. C. Using perfume or cologne to mask odors. D. Long hair and nails are acceptable if clean. Answer. B. Regular hand washing, maintaining clean uniforms, and avoiding work when sick. Personal hygiene is crucial in preventing the spread of foodborne pathogens. Question 15. How should chemical sanitizers be used correctly in a kitchen? A. At any concentration, as long as the surface appears clean. B. Following manufacturer's instructions for concentration, contact time, and safety. C. Only for cleaning floors and not food contact surfaces. D. Without gloves to ensure thorough application. Answer. B. Following manufacturer's instructions for concentration, contact time, and safety. Correct use of chemical sanitizers involves adhering to specified guidelines to ensure effectiveness and safety. Question 16. 
What are the major food allergens identified by the FDA? A. Gluten, lactose, sugar, and fat. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans. C. Artificial colorings, flavorings, preservatives, and sweeteners. D. Beef, pork, chicken, and corn. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans. These eight allergens are responsible for the majority of allergic reactions related to food in the United States. Question 17. Describe how to properly thaw frozen food. A. On the countertop overnight. B. Under warm running water. C. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave. D. Directly in the oven while cooking. Answer. C. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave. These methods prevent the food from entering the danger zone during thawing. Question 18. What are the consequences of failing a health inspection? A. Mandatory closure for a minimum of one week. B. No immediate consequences. C. Possible fines, mandatory corrective actions, or closure until issues are resolved. D. Public listing in the local newspaper as a warning. Answer. C. Possible fines, mandatory corrective actions, or closure until issues are resolved. Failing a health inspection can lead to serious consequences, emphasizing the need for adherence to food safety practices. Question 19. How can food handlers identify food spoilage? A. By the expiration date only. B. Changes in color, odor, texture, and taste. C. Spoilage is not visible. Food is safe until proven otherwise. D. If the food is more than a week old. Answer. B. Changes in color, odor, texture, and taste. These signs can indicate that food has spoiled and may not be safe to eat. Question 20. What actions should be taken if a food handler is diagnosed with a foodborne illness? A. Continue working but avoid direct contact with food. B. Report the illness to a supervisor and stay home until cleared by a medical professional. C. Work in areas away from the kitchen only. D. Wear gloves and a mask to prevent spreading the illness. Answer. B. Report the illness to a supervisor and stay home until cleared by a medical professional. It's crucial to prevent the spread of illness by not working while contagious. Question 21. Describe the process for sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. A. Rinse with hot water, then dry with a clean towel. B. Soak in soap water overnight. C. Clean with soap and water, then apply an approved sanitizer according to the label instructions. D. Spray with an all-purpose cleaner and wipe. Answer. C. Clean with soap and water, then apply an approved sanitizer according to the label instructions. This two-step process ensures that kitchen tools and equipment are free from food debris and harmful microorganisms. Question 22. What are critical control points and their importance in food safety? A. Points where financial control is critical to the operation's success. B. Steps in the food preparation process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. C. Only important in large industrial kitchens. D. The points at which food is served to customers. Answer. B. Steps in the food preparation process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. Identifying and managing critical control points is crucial for minimizing the risk of foodborne illness. Question 23. How should a food handler deal with a cut or wound on their hand? A. Cover the wound with a bandage only. B. Continue working, but avoid using the injured hand. C. Cover the wound with a bandage and a glove or use a finger cut. D. Stop working until the wound has fully healed. Answer. C. Cover the wound with a bandage and a glove or use a finger cut. This prevents bacteria from the wound contaminating the food and vice versa. Question 24. 
What is the correct procedure for washing fruits and vegetables? A. Soak in a mild soap solution, then rinse. B. Rinse with water only. C. Wash with a bleach solution to kill all germs. D. Rinse under running potable water, using a brush for firm produce. Answer. D. Rinse under running potable water, using a brush for firm produce. This method effectively removes dirt and reduces the presence of microorganisms without using harmful chemicals. Question 25. How does IFO? First in, first out, method improve food safety. A. By using the oldest products first, it minimizes the risk of using expired or spoiled ingredients. B. Ensures the newest products are used first, keeping inventory fresh. C. FIFO is primarily a financial management tool not related to food safety. D. It reduces kitchen clutter by minimizing stock. Answer. A. By using the oldest products first, it minimizes the risk of using expired or spoiled ingredients. This practice helps maintain the quality and safety of the food being served. Question 26. What temperature should cold foods be stored at to prevent bacterial growth? A. At or below 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. B. At or below 40 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius. C. At or below 50 degree Fahrenheit, 10 degree Celsius. D. At room temperature, as long as the room is ventilated. Answer. B. At or below 40 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius. Keeping cold foods at this temperature slows the growth of bacteria, ensuring the foods remain safe to eat. Question 27. Why is it important to use a food thermometer? A. To ensure foods are cooked to a safe temperature that kills harmful bacteria. B. To improve the flavor of cooked foods. C. For checking the room temperature. D. To measure the temperature of the refrigerator or freezer. Answer. A to ensure foods are cooked to a safe temperature that kills harmful bacteria. A food thermometer is an essential tool for verifying that foods have reached safe internal temperatures. Question 28. How can a food service establishment ensure that it is compliant with local health department regulations? A. By following the guidelines set out in the latest food safety magazines. B. Regular training and audits based on local health department standards. C. Assuming practices that were safe last year are still safe this year. D. Only making changes when cited by a health inspector. Answer. B. Regular training and audits based on local health department standards. This proactive approach ensures compliance with regulations and maintains high standards of food safety. Question 29. What should be done if a customer reports a foodborne illness? A. Offer them a refund and a free meal. B. Ignore the complaint unless more reports are received. C. Document the complaint, investigate the issue, and report it to the local health department if necessary. D. Blame the customer for eating the food incorrectly. Answer. C. Document the complaint, investigate the issue, and report it to the local health department if necessary. This response ensures that the complaint is taken seriously and that steps are taken to prevent future incidents. Question 30. Describe the proper use and storage of gloves in food handling. A. Use the same pair of gloves for handling all types of food to save on supplies. B. Change gloves frequently, especially between handling raw and ready-to-eat foods, and store them in a clean, dry place. C. Gloves are not necessary if hands are washed regularly. D. Reuse gloves after washing them with soap and water to reduce waste. Answer. B. Change gloves frequently, especially between handling raw and ready-to-eat foods, and store them in a clean, dry place. Proper glove use helps prevent cross-contamination between different food items. Question 31. How should food handlers manage food allergies in the kitchen? A. By avoiding the use of any allergenic ingredients in the kitchen. B. Labeling allergenic ingredients clearly and preventing cross-contact with allergens. C. 
assuming customers will inform the staff if they have an allergy. D, serving small portions to customers with allergies to minimize reactions. Answer, B, labeling allergenic ingredients clearly and preventing cross-contact with allergens. This approach helps safeguard customers with food allergies by minimizing the risk of exposure. Question 32. What is the significance of using color-coded cutting boards? A. To brighten up the kitchen and improve the mood of the staff. B. To prevent cross-contamination by using specific colors for different types of food, such as raw meat, vegetables, and poultry. C. Color coding is only for organizational purposes and has no safety benefits. D. To indicate the freshness of the food being prepared. Answer B. To prevent cross-contamination by using specific colors for different types of food, such as raw meat, vegetables, and poultry. This system helps keep foods separate and reduces the risk of bacterial transfer. Question 33. How does proper ventilation contribute to food safety in a commercial kitchen? A. It cools down the kitchen, making it more comfortable for staff. B. It removes airborne contaminants and reduces excess moisture, helping to prevent the growth of mold and bacteria. C. Ventilation is only necessary for removing cooking odors. D. It increases the oxygen level in the kitchen, making food cook faster. Answer. B. It removes airborne contaminants and reduces excess moisture, helping to prevent the growth of mold and bacteria. Adequate ventilation is crucial for maintaining air quality and food safety in commercial kitchens. Question 34. Why is it important to avoid overloading a refrigerator or freezer? A. It makes it difficult to find items quickly. B. Overloading can block air circulation, leading to uneven cooling and increased risk of foodborne illness. C. It can cause the motor to overheat and break down. D. It uses more electricity, increasing operational costs. Answer. B. Overloading can block air circulation, leading to uneven cooling and increased risk of foodborne illness. Proper air circulation is necessary to keep foods at safe temperatures. Question 35. What are the guidelines for serving food safely in outdoor or temporary service settings? A. Food safety guidelines are more relaxed outdoors due to fresh air. B. Use disposable utensils and plates only. C. Follow the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand hygiene facilities. D. Focus mainly on keeping hot foods hot. Cold foods can be served at room temperature. Answer. C. Follow the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand hygiene facilities. Consistent food safety practices are essential, regardless of the serving location, to prevent foodborne illness. Question 36. How should live shellfish be stored upon receiving? A. In a tightly sealed container to prevent escape. B. Submerged in tap water to keep them hydrated. C. In a self-draining container at the bottom of the fridge to ensure they remain alive without being submerged in water. D. At room temperature for no more than two hours before cooking. Answer. C in a self-draining container at the bottom of the fridge to ensure they remain alive without being submerged in water. Proper storage conditions are crucial for maintaining the safety and quality of live shellfish. Question 37. Describe the measures to take when a food recall is announced. A. Continue using the recalled product until a replacement is found. B. Immediately identify and isolate the recalled product, then follow the manufacturer's instructions for disposal or return. C. Wait for a customer complaint before taking action. D. Use the recalled product only for employee meals to minimize waste. Answer. B. Immediately identify and isolate the recalled product, then follow the manufacturer's instructions for disposal or return. Prompt action is required to prevent the use of potentially dangerous products. Question 38. How can mobile food trucks ensure food safety similar to permanent food service establishments? A. By having a more relaxed approach to food safety due to their mobility. B. 
following the same principles of food safety, including temperature control, hand washing facilities, and regular inspections. C. Using only pre-packaged foods to avoid handling raw ingredients. D. Limiting the menu to cold items only. Answer. B. Following the same principles of food safety, including temperature control, hand washing facilities, and regular inspections. Mobile food trucks must adhere to the same food safety standards as stationary establishments to protect public health. Question 39. What steps should be followed to clean and sanitize a three-compartment sink? A. Fill one sink with soap and water, the second with clean water, and the third with the sanitizer solution, then air dry? B. Use all three sinks for washing with soap and water, then let air dry? C. Fill each sink with a different type of chemical cleaner for thorough cleaning. D. Use the first sink for storage, the second for washing, and the third for rinsing only. Answer. A. Fill one sink with soap and water, the second with clean water, and the third with the sanitizer solution, then air dry. This process ensures that utensils and equipment are properly cleaned and sanitized. Question 40. How does high humidity in storage areas affect food preservation and safety? A. It enhances the flavor of stored foods. B. High humidity can encourage the growth of mold and bacteria, potentially leading to food spoilage. C. Humidity has no effect on food safety. D. It decreases the shelf life of canned goods. Answer. B. High humidity can encourage the growth of mold and bacteria, potentially leading to food spoilage. Managing humidity is important for maintaining food quality and safety in storage areas. Question 41. Why is it important to have a designated area for smoking, eating, and drinking away from food prep areas? A. To keep the food prep area clean and prevent any possible contamination from saliva or tobacco. B. It's a preference, not a requirement for food safety. C to allow staff to relax away from the busy food prep area. D. Smoking, eating, and drinking do not impact food safety. Answer. A. To keep the food prep area clean and prevent any possible contamination from saliva or tobacco, designated areas reduce the risk of contaminating food and surfaces. Question 42. Describe how to properly dispose of grease and food waste to prevent pest attraction. A. Pour grease down the drain and dispose of food waste in unsealed containers. B. Store grease in a designated container and dispose of food waste in a sealed, leak-proof container. C. Leave grease and food waste outside for natural decomposition. D. Recycle grease by using it in different food preparations and compost all food waste indoors. Answer. B. Store grease in a designated container and dispose of food waste in a sealed, leak-proof container. Proper disposal methods help prevent attracting pests and maintain a clean kitchen environment. Question 43. What is the role of a food safety auditor, and how can establishments prepare for an audit? A. The auditor's role is to penalize establishments. Preparation involves hiding any faults. B. Auditors recommend new recipes to improve menu quality. Preparation involves menu planning. C. Auditors assess compliance with food safety standards. Preparation involves reviewing and adhering to food safety practices. D. The auditor's role is solely advisory with no real impact. No preparation is needed. Answer. C. Auditors assess compliance with food safety standards. Preparation involves reviewing and adhering to food safety practices. Being well prepared demonstrates a commitment to food safety. Question 44. How should ice be handled and stored to prevent contamination? A. Ice should be treated as food, using clean, designated scoops and storing away from potential contaminants. B. Using bare hands to handle ice is acceptable if hands are washed. C. Ice only needs to be stored in clean containers, but can be handled without precautions. D. Store ice next to raw meats to save space, as cold temperatures will prevent contamination. Answer. 
A. Ice should be treated as food, using clean, designated scoops and storing away from potential contaminants. Proper handling and storage of ice prevent it from becoming a source of contamination. Question 45. What training should be provided to food handlers to ensure they understand food allergen management? A. Basic cooking techniques only, since handling allergens is intuitive. B. Training on the major food allergens, cross-contact prevention, and communication with customers about allergens. C. No specific training, as food allergies are rare. D. Only managers need allergen training. Food handlers just need to follow recipes. Answer. B. Training on the major food allergens, cross-contact prevention, and communication with customers about allergens. Comprehensive training ensures that staff can safely prepare and serve food to customers with allergies. Question 46. Explain the importance of maintaining dry storage areas and the proper conditions for such areas. A. Dry storage areas are important for storing equipment, not food. B. Keeping dry storage areas cool and dry prevents the growth of mold and bacteria and protects the integrity of dry goods. C. Humidity and temperature control in dry storage areas are only necessary for certain spices. D. Dry storage areas should be kept warm to prevent food from freezing. Answer. B. Keeping dry storage areas cool and dry prevents the growth of mold and bacteria and protects the integrity of dry goods. Proper conditions are crucial for food safety and quality. Question 47. How should a food handler dress to minimize the risk of food contamination? A. In loose clothing and jewelry to express personal style. B. With clean and appropriate uniforms, hair restraints, and minimal jewelry. C. Personal protective equipment like gloves and masks only, regardless of clothing. D. The dress code is less important than the food handling technique. Answer. B. With clean and appropriate uniforms, hair restraints, and minimal jewelry. Proper attire helps prevent physical contaminants from entering food. Question 48. What are the guidelines for using and storing food additives and preservatives safely? A. Use as much as desired to achieve the required taste and preservation effect. B. Follow manufacturer instructions and regulatory guidelines to ensure additives and preservatives are used safely. C. Food additives and preservatives are not necessary in modern cooking. D. Store food additives and preservatives in the same area as cleaning chemicals for convenience. Answer. B. Follow manufacturer instructions and regulatory guidelines to ensure additives and preservatives are used safely. Proper use and storage are important for food safety. Question 49. What are the guidelines for serving food safely to customers with food allergies? A. Assume all customers have allergies and serve foods accordingly. B. Clearly communicate ingredient information, avoid cross-contact, and train staff on food allergy protocols. C. Remove only the allergen-rich ingredients from dishes upon request. D. Food allergies should be managed by the customers themselves. Answer. B. Clearly communicate ingredient information, avoid cross-contact, and train staff on food allergy protocols. These practices help ensure the safety of customers with food allergies. Question 50. Describe the steps to take when transitioning from handling raw meat to ready-to-eat foods to prevent cross-contamination. A. No action needed if hands are washed at the beginning of the shift. B. Wipe hands on a clean towel before handling ready-to-eat foods. C. Wash hands thoroughly, change gloves, and use clean utensils and surfaces. D. It's safe to handle ready-to-eat foods immediately after raw meat if the meat was fresh. Answer. C. Wash hands thoroughly, change gloves, and use clean utensils and surfaces. Proper hygiene and sanitation practices are essential to prevent cross-contamination between raw and ready-to-eat foods.